comes the sun Here comes the sun I say it's all right everyone so I already made a video this morning but for some reason it's not uploading and I don't know what's going on so take two here goes let me bring up my thing with all the questions on it okay so my week has been fairly busy lots of schoolwork lots of drama just trying to get by but I mean overall it's been decent so I'm just gonna go straight into the questions this week um Olivia asked on Saturday if you do something physically demanding one day do you suffer consequences the next yes absolutely yes if I do something on a day especially that I know I already don't feel very well I'm gonna be sick the next day like guaranteed why do my eyelashes look funny these ones look long and these ones don't I have mascara on. I don't know why these ones don't look long. It's weird. They look so much longer than those ones. Anyway, sorry I got distracted. Okay, hi. Um, yes, if I do something physically demanding one day, and then I, you know, yeah, I feel terrible the next day. And especially, now if it's a day that I feel decent and I do something physically demanding, I might still be able to function the next day. But it just really depends on how I feel the morning that I'm going to do something demanding. On Monday, Caroline asked, what medications are you on and have they helped? I am on Florineth and Zebeta. Florineth, I think it helps me. I think it helps the dizziness for me, but it doesn't help a lot. Zebeta helps me tremendously. If you have not tried a beta blocker and your doctor would like you to, don't be scared. Because for me, I was scared, but I tried it and it made a world of difference. Because my pulse was my main issue, and it's brought down my pulse rate and it is... A miracle medicine. It's really what gets me to function. On Wednesday, I'm skipping over Rian, Rian, Rian. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. I'm skipping over your question for now, and I'm gonna come back to it. On Wednesday, Lauren asked, "Do you play instruments?" I used to play viola in middle school orchestra. Fun times in that orchestra. That was a fun class. Um, but I stopped for high school drill team, so I don't really play viola anymore. I play some piano and some guitar sometimes, but I was never very good at reading music, and I just, it's not something I'm majorly into. Um, Linnea, on Thursday, asked, what are you doing for this school year? Linnea, by the way, you look so pretty in your video. Like, not that you don't normally look pretty, not that anybody else didn't look pretty, but you looked really pretty in your video. Anyway, I am continuing to go to a charter school, which is amazing because it's four hours a day, self-paced, amazing stuff. If you're looking into homeschooling or all alternate schooling options, look into charter schools because they are state funded. You do not have to pay and they're lovely. And I'm going to hopefully graduate by December. Yay! Well, okay, I shouldn't say graduate. I'm going to be done in my main classes by December and I won't have to go to that school. Like I won't have to go to the charter school anymore. But in the spring semester I'm going to be taking a community college class for my sign language credit because what happened is I started my sign language in high school and I got a year and a half credit for it but in Texas to graduate you have to have two years of a consecutive language to get the recommended degree so I need another half credit well I'm doing sign language at the community college to go ahead and finish getting that extra credit because otherwise I'd have to start all over in another language I'm so glad I have this opportunity because first off, I love sign language. Second off, I really didn't want to do two years of a whole other language. So I'm very excited about this opportunity. Um, Rian, Rian, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, you asked what your favorite book was, and honestly, I don't know. I've thought long and hard about that question. I was like, oh, that's such a hard question. There are some that have stuck out to me, but honestly, I haven't read much in the past four years except for my required reading for school. And you know, the ones that have stuck out to me are The Alchemist. That was a good book. It's very slow, but there's a lot of quotable things in it, and I like stuff like that, and it made me think differently. So that was a good book. Um, Night by Eli Weasel. It is a depressing book, and it is about the Holocaust. 
However, I love the way it's written. Whenever we get assigned, like, you know, pick whatever novel you want and write about it in English, I always pick that novel because there's so much to write about. There's so much figurative language, or at least I found for me personally, that there's so much I can write about. So that's a good book. To Kill a Mockingbird I liked. Harry Potter is always good. But I really don't have a favorite, and I really haven't had time for, like, just leisurely, leisurely reading. Like, because I get brain fog so much, it's actually really hard for me to read and focus on what I'm reading. Like, a lot of the time in English in school, I have to listen to what I'm reading to really comprehend what I'm, what I'm physically, or, like, visually seeing. So, that is one of my accommodations, is listening to, like, passages and readings. But... Yeah, so that's my answer to that, and I am so sorry about your grandfather. I completely understand how emotions can affect pots, and my question this week actually semi-relates to that. I've been dealing a lot with negative aspects of my life and losing a lot of people that I used to be close with. I'm dealing with a breakup recently. There's a lot of drama going on. I'm losing a lot of people that I was really close with, and I think a lot of potsies can really understand that. Because, you know, you lose a lot of your friends once you're diagnosed because normal high school teenagers, you know, go off and do normal high school teenager things. And sometimes we can't. In fact, oftentimes we can't. So I feel like everybody has experience with that. But right now it's really major for me because my ex-boyfriend I was best friends with for pretty much three years. And he's been my stone. Like, he's been my block for everything. Um... And then I have other friends, but you know, they're always busy with school. They go to public high school. So, I mean, it's hard. And I am keeping in touch with some older friends now. Like, I'm meeting them up and I'm, you know, meeting new friends at work. And I mean, I have other friends, but it's more all these negative emotions from the loss and everything, the breakup, that I'm like, how do you guys handle all that? Because for me, you know, a lot of people tell you exercise, exercise. It gets all the negative emotions out. Well, I can't exercise. Like, I can do biking, but that's only on my good days and that's only if I feel decent because if I already feel bad and I bike it's gonna make me feel a bajillion times worse and that's just not gonna help anything so how do you guys handle that I mean I found that warm showers and talking to people and keeping myself distracted sometimes helps but I wanted to see what you guys had to say just you know how do you deal with negative emotions and negative things in your life um cuz yeah I don't really have any hobbies and people say you know go go get a hobby well what? I can't really read a lot. Um, what's a hobby I could get into? I'm not very patient. I used to do theater, but with my school right now, that's not going to work. Like, So I just, I want some ideas as to how y'all handle that. So I think that's it. And I hope this video uploads and I hope y'all are having a healthy, amazing week. And I will see you guys next week. I love y'all. See you later.